Thanks so much for the warm welcome. Uh, it's an honor to be here at B&H's event space. Uh, uh, you don't know who I am, so I might as well just take a moment to say who I am. My name is Matt Hill. Uh, by daytime, I'm a professional marketer. Uh, my job, 20 years in the photo industry, working for lots of brands you may know uh, as a professional marketing guy. Uh, my nighttime job, my avocation, is I'm a night photographer, and I've been doing that for over 20 years. I'm also a cut paper artist. Uh, and I combine those two things to make a very special project called Night Paper, which we'll talk about. Uh, and I had a, a really fun time exploring this project that I call Night Paper. And it's very, it's nurturing to me as an artist because it's, it's unique. I really haven't seen anybody do anything like it. And also, uh, I get to pursue things that I haven't done before by exploring this project. Now, one thing that's absolutely essential to every project uh, is gear, and that's kind of where the story takes a left turn, and we'll get into that. Um, and that's it's sort of a crux of what happened to me, but I capitalized on it. So, so me, I'm a photographer, I'm an artist, I'm somebody who studies and earns money through marketing. So all these things came together for me, and I've been, I've been really watching and learning and loving what's happening on Kickstarter for about three years. Uh, and I put a lot of effort into understanding it before I did launch my first campaign. So let's just get into it. This is what I think about Kickstarter. It's all potential. It's just waiting there. There's a whole bunch of people that want to give you money. They really do. They want you to have a great story. They want to give you money. Isn't that extraordinary? It's so, it's so, it's, it's just like this apple. You just want to reach up and like, just grab it and take a big bite out of it, right? Uh, I do want to say this first. I'm not an employee of Kickstarter. I'm not affiliated with them. I'm just somebody who, I'm both a backer and a creator. And I do have in my projects, I'm not safe for work images, but you're not going to see them here. So if you're curious, you can go view them on my website or my Kickstarter, but this presentation is very PG. So. This is the checkpoint where we start first. Your chances of success on Kickstarter are slim. If you're not strong, stop here. If you don't want to be tenacious, just stop here. I'm being honest. And I'm going to show you the data that they provide on the website. Kickstarter puts this on slash help slash stats. I got it last night. The success rate is 37, maybe 38%. You can't just put up a project and win. There's certain things that actually get you to success. If you look at the categories, you can see that down here is photography, 30% success rate. Art, 42.2%. Publishing, 30%. And all of this, by the way, uh, not only is this being recorded, but I have this deck you can download the PDF from my website, and the URL will be at the end. I'll show you that. So if you want to see these numbers more closely, you can then. It's just fascinating to see. It's not only an adventure for the person who's backing you, because they're investing in you. They're not buying something. They're investing in you. It's also an adventure for you. Can I make it to the end? Can I get fully funded? Because Kickstarter is a do or die platform. If you don't get fully funded, if you don't reach that number that you asked for, you get nothing. And that's where these stats come from. If you don't reach 100% or greater funding, you don't get any of it. So you need to calculate how to get there. And here's another interesting stat. They say that 79% of the projects that raised more than 20% of their goal were successfully funded. Your first milestone, your first real tangible goal is to get to 20%. And right around 50%, that's the golden mark almost all, it's not, it's not guaranteed, nothing's guaranteed in this life, almost all of the projects that make 50% have a great chance of getting to 100%. So keep that in mind uh, when you think about how much to ask for. So this is the bottom line for me. If your idea and marketing are great and you are tenacious, then there's Kickstarter money for you. But you must be tenacious. This is not something you jump into lightly. 
And this is one of my favorite stats. You see, there's 9 million total people that have backed on Kickstarter, but you want to be focused on the 2.7 million that have backed more than one project. Those are the same people who might have gotten into eBay a decade ago, and they really got into the bidding war. You know, they're like, they just, they get that thrill from backing something, but this is totally different. It's not a competition to win something. It's participating in something that's revelatory. It lifts you up. It's something new. You're helping somebody achieve a dream. So let's talk about how you prepare. I did a lot of study. Being a marketing guy, I, I generally study everything from email to paid advertising to all these other things. But I saw Kickstarter as, you might look at it as a crowdfunding platform, but it's also an incredible marketing platform. When you want to have an idea, you can find out how many people want to buy your idea. So if you want to study businesses, check them out on Kickstarter. And you should go find your category. In this case, I'm talking about fine art. So one of those three categories that I showed is where you could probably place your project. You should go there and look at every single project right now and the past six months and learn how people put together their campaign and their project, who won and who didn't. And then once you've done all this learning and you see what everybody's done, you want to say, all right, in my category right now, there's nothing hot. This is a good time to launch. You wait for that and hope that at the same time there's something huge, like exploding kittens, to happen at the same time. How many people here back exploding kittens? Anybody? All right, I got at least one more. That's good. So if you have another big thing happening on Kickstarter, there might be overflow. Because once you've backed one thing, you get that like endorphin rush. And you're like, what else can I do? Can I back something else that'll make me feel this good? You might get those people who want to have their second backing after they get that little success button. So the Kickstarter provides this. This is the, what I call the short version of how you're supposed to go about launching your Kickstarter. Build it, get feedback, launch it, track your funding progress, fund it. There's a lot going on in those first five that makes it sound really simple. Keep backers in the loop, very good, send rewards, and you did it. So what did they leave out? I think this is, a, this is an important rule for life. You should really evaluate everything in context. If you dream about your Kickstarter without staring at the Kickstarter website and looking at other people's campaigns, you're dreaming of it in a vacuum. You have to put it in context. You need to take your ideas and then compare them to all the other ideas that are happening, because you need to be different and better. Doing lots of research is very important, too. If you don't know who's doing what well, then you're going to fail. And then this is really important. Don't fake it. Go back some other projects. Go participate in Kickstarter. Find something that you love, that you want to give money to, and become a backer. Whether it wins or loses, you're going to learn something. You're going to see their updates. You're going to find out why they got you excited. And that's going to come back into and inform everything that you do with yours. You're going to learn from that process. So what do they not widely say about Kickstarter? I say it's one of the most intense marketing experiences upon which you'll ever embark. It truly is. If you just think you're going to take a little toy boat and float it out into the pond, and it's going to reach the other side because there's wind, no. You have to be standing behind it the whole time blowing. And the nice part, the other side of this is, when you earn all of these customers during a campaign, they're yours for life. You can post an update after your campaign is done and tell these people who already gave you money that you have a new idea coming or that there's a new version of it. Or if they liked it, but their friends didn't get in on the Kickstarter, that you can now buy it from your website. Those are just some examples. But they're your customers. You have earned them. So I studied a lot of campaigns. But for the sake of brevity, I just wanted to show you these two because they're special to me in different ways. The first one, the Lomo Petzval lens, was an extraordinary, extraordinary campaign. Lomo decided to resurrect a lens design from the 1840s called the Petzval. And it basically has water house stops. It's very old school. And you, but they updated it so it can be on a Nikon or a Canon DSLR. They, they asked for $20,000. 
And I think they ended up somewhere around a million five, something, something ridiculous. They got 3,379 people to back at about $350 a pop. <laughs> and I got in early. I was back, like backer, I don't know, 246 or something. And there was 3,000 people after me that backed. So that one, the way they handled it, and if you go on the website and look at it, and look at all of their updates and the page that they created, it's an example of a near perfect Kickstarter campaign because it's authentic, it's enthusiastic, and they made something that nobody else ever made, unique. Surfsite Tintype, on the other hand, is an art book. Like, that's an art lens. The other thing is an art book. I met Joni at a F295, which is a photography symposium. She was a speaker, and during her talk, she said, in two or three weeks, I'm going to be launching a Kickstarter. Now, I couldn't buy her first book because it was out of print, where she makes tintypes on the beach of surfers. Unique, one-of-a-kind images, right? So, and also, her book was limited edition, out of print. Couldn't buy one. So I wanted to get the second book very badly once I realized that there was something rare. You know, That's part of this process. If you offer something rare, it's more attractive. So I knew that I was going to do it. So I, I waited. I followed her on every social I could so that I could find out when she was going to launch. And then she did launch. I backed it. It was great. But you can see, in order of magnitude, she had 300. And Lomo had 3,000 people. So there's a huge difference between the number of people. But they're both successful campaigns. They both reached their goals. And they both shipped a product. If you go into photography projects today, there's 189 live photography projects. Wow. That's your competition. If you launch today, there's 189 other people that want money. You can go learn from that. And you see, the green bar actually shows you how far the funding is. If it's all the way across, they reach their funding and they can earn more. So this is where you start to study. And of course, some friends of mine already sent me links to the, the trial plan lens, the soap bubble bouquet. I, I love odd lenses, so I didn't back that one. I really want to, but I have to save my money. So the next most important thing is if you're not already a natural storyteller, you got to think about why people should care about you. Start telling your story. You have something special that you want to do. Tell it to everyone. Say, can I have like three minutes of your time? I want to tell you a story that's important to me. And do it face to face. Practice your story. There's no substitute for this. You need to speak to people eyeball to eyeball and get their human reactions to how they feel about what you're saying. And then you revise the story. When you see that they lose attention, you take care of that part. You change it a little bit so you gain their attention again. You look for the positive affirmations, like them shaking their head or smiling or saying, yeah, yeah, tell me more. Those are things you want to do more of. You also want to plan your media. If you're not a graphic artist, don't pretend to be one. Hire somebody or barter for it. You should have good looking graphics. It's important because first impressions, like they say, you never get it back again. So if you look good, you immediately have more trust. So having good design helps a lot. And when you're done working on your story, go find a stranger and pull them aside. They might think you're crazy, especially if you pull them aside on the street and be like, hey, can I have four minutes of your time? I want to tell you about something special. It might be kind of creepy, so <laughs> find the right kind of stranger. Maybe it's somebody in B&H, you know? Everybody loves photography here, so. But if you can convince somebody who's a total stranger and doesn't care about you that you have a good idea, you're on to something, and you should keep pursuing it. Here's some really good questions that you should ask yourself and be honest about the answers. Why should someone believe you? Why? Why are you trustable? Why should they believe you? Why are you different and more special than everybody else that's going to be asking for money at the same time? Why is your product worth investing in? Because it's not a purchase, it's a pledge. They're investing in the potential that you might deliver something. It's not commerce, it's investment. And what can you share about your process that gives a potential backer a feeling of being included in something special? and craft it by someone with passion and a vision. How can you do that? How can you bring these things together? Words are so important, and you have to work on your story. And these questions can help you 
polish your story from something that's purely functional into something that's motivational. So here's what I did. This is the title of mine. Night paper, surreal paper fashions plus long exposures. In the title, you have to say, does it create curiosity? Because the first thing a title does is it makes you want to learn more or go away. I was hoping that most, more people wanted to learn more when they see this, because surreal is a cool word. Long exposures, that's sort of a fascination with night photography. And what is night paper? It's, it's a strange combination of words. You don't see them adjacent to each other. The next thing is your short description, which is very limited in characters. So what I said, I'm an artist working on a lifelong dream project, night paper, for over two years, and my camera gear was stolen in San Francisco. Truth, that's, I told you there was a turning point here. I had gear that I invested at least five or six years in, and it all got stolen in a moment, and I couldn't continue my project. And I had, I had a really serious talk with myself. I'm like, I want to continue this, but what do I do? Like, I was so dumb, I didn't have insurance. I admit it. So what do I do? I could cry about it. I gave myself one day. <laughs> I'll be honest. I gave myself one day to be totally morose about this. And I beat myself up. And the next day, I decided, all right, you've studied Kickstarter. Why don't you do a Kickstarter? And that's what I did. So I was just honest. My camera was stolen. I'm an artist. I have a dream. So did I give a person a reason to believe here? I think I did. And then I, the follow up, your first copy that's in paragraph form after that, you just have to ask yourself, does it express sincerity and provide a reason for someone to believe you that you will do something meaningful with their money? So in this, I was just honest. Honesty wins over anything. You can be not eloquent, but be honest, and people will reward you with their trust. In this case, their trust is money. Right? So in this case, I had to admit that I was a bozo and I didn't insure my gear. But I also had to make it clear that I'm not asking for charity. I'm going to deliver a product. I'm going to make you art. If you love my art, you're going to help me get back on track. Because I'm going to make you prints that I already have. And you're going to help me buy camera gear by buying my prints. It's, it's commerce. It's an exchange. And it's people buying art. So. Admittedly, I had a really emotional reason for people to believe in me, but I wasn't trying to capitalize on that. I was saying, listen, I just want to make art again. Please help me do that. So your keystone visual. This is the one image that goes with everything. It's, it's at the top of your Kickstarter. When it gets shared on social, it gets made a small version. You have to pick an image that's not boring. Please, just make sure it's a page stopper. And when you go review everybody else's stuff, make sure it's not similar to anybody else's. And it's got to work at this size. It's got to work at this size. So you got to make sure that it works at all of these sizes. This was one of my favorite images for my project. And just you might see some things here that why would you add these things? The Kickstarter staff pick, if you get chosen, they let you know. But I pursued it. I'm like, where do I get this graphic that everybody has? They're like, oh, it's not official. We don't actually encourage that. They don't want you to put Kickstarter staff pick on it, but they don't tell anybody not to do it either. So some people grab the graphic that somebody made originally, and everybody uses that one. I didn't. I, I used mine. And then when I got funded, I just wanted people to know, because frankly, all I wanted was the minimum amount. I only asked for $6,000, but I ended up getting close to twelve. When I hit my, my minimum, I stopped promoting. I said, you know, I'm really satisfied. Thank you, everybody. I'm really grateful. Now I can move on. But momentum kept it going. And I put the funded there just to let people know, trust me, I, I'm, not, I'm not being greedy here. You know, You also must have a video. And don't be scared of this, but you must do it. Kickstarters without videos fail. I haven't really seen a lot of ones that don't have a video that succeed. And it's a great way to communicate. It's a great way to commu communicate sincerity. If you ever sent an email to somebody and they misunderstood you, then you know what I'm talking about. Because words without seeing somebody's face can be misunderstood. 
In video, you transcend that. They can see your face while you're talking. And you can also put music in there. That also sets the tone. So I think it's really important to get this done. And if you can, get it done right. My video, I made with my phone because I had a sense of urgency. I wanted it to be done. But it also had a level of sincerity. And if there's more than one person involved in your project, make sure everybody gets on screen so that they can see, see and believe everybody that's behind this project. And if you can, exude hopefulness and confidence. <laughs> it's really important. Bring positivism with you instead of negativism, and people will also feel positive about it. Also very important is please make it tangible. Um, Kickstarter, they used to curate everything. About a year ago, they changed the rules, and they now allow people to publish in moments. There's no review anymore, so it changed from a highly curated group of things to practically anything. So I think that the failure rate increased at that point, but also their, their potential payout base increased at the same time, which was a smart business move. You should be paying attention to make sure that you can deliver something. Because again, Kickstarter is not about charity, 0% charity. It's about creativity. And it's about entrepreneurship. So you need to deliver something. Uh, and that, in my case, I did it with art. I made lots and lots of different kinds of art. And I'll show you what all those are. And covering many price points, I'm going to show you that also. And this is the only time I take things out of context. I put everything together in just a blank Word document so I wouldn't be distracted by all the bells and whistles on the Kickstarter website. If you start to use their tool, you might get distracted by the process instead of the content. So using a bare word processor at that point to only focus on your content is an important thing to keep it clean and to keep you focused on what you should be paying attention to. I already talked about being part of the community, but I, I can't express it enough. You'll understand more by backing a project than by not backing a project. So go spend some money and get something cool that's meaningful to your life. You'll also be uh, included in all of the non-public updates at that point. You'll get all of the backer-only updates, which you can send. And those are very important communications. And you can learn from the people who do it well and the people that don't do it well. Uh, so these are the things that I've backed. Uh, never shown anybody this. You're the first. So uh, you have an opportunity to say, I got something or I didn't get something. So you can see I've done everything from like a marketing thing, the grand deck, the exploding kittens, which we talked about. Which is the most successful Kickstarter of all time to date. Anybody know who the oatmeal is, the cartoonist? Yeah. He made a deck. He made a game called Exploding Kittens. Uh, a time lapse thing that's Bluetooth, uh, a friend's uh, pilot. Uh, I'm involved in the burlesque community because of my project. So I backed uh, two people who made a movie. The belt, actually, I'm wearing the belt right now. <laughs> And there's Surfsite Tim type, um, a hackable GIF camera. There's all these things, and some of them delivered and some have not. And that's something I wanted to show you guys, uh, and we're going to talk about it more. Uh, but you can see about half of what I've backed is photography based. And it's really, oh, this sticker is from the first thing I ever backed on Kickstarter the horror and clay. So <laughs> it's just a tiki mug, right? First thing I ever backed. So. There's also this uncollected pledges. I wanted to show you this. Two things here I canceled, and three things here never made it to funding. I'm not saying that I'm, I can smell out the good ones, you know, but I, my success rate's pretty good. Three failed. I backed out on two, and 20 made it to funding. So I, I, I backed 20 projects that worked, and three that did not. That's what it boils down to. And by backing those 20, I learned a lot. So. The ones I backed out of, you know, one was Prudence, and the other one, I liked the story. The M Block, the CEO of that company, sent a message to all the backers saying, we thought this technology was going to work this way. Now that we've gotten further down the development process, it's going to work this way, which is not what we said. If any of you disagree uh, and don't like this, please feel free to retract your pledge, which I did, because I wanted it to work that way that they said it would. So that honesty level kept me not angry at them, and I was able to take my money back which before the campaign ended. 
So you know, I also want to say that if you don't have a good story, if you don't have a good network of fans or a media plan, you're, you're also not going to have a lot of success here. Uh, but I'm going to give you some options if you don't have those things as we go on. So let's talk about creating your rewards. Um, please, 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 whatever timeline you think you can achieve, just double it and then double it again. Because when I made mine, I'm like, yeah, I can make all those prints in like a month. Whatever, you know? Nah, it didn't work out that way. My, I was done with the prints four or five months later. And I felt awful because I made a promise and I didn't keep that promise to the backers. I said I'd have them done in like December or January. And I shipped the practically the last of the prints in like May. Uh, and it just... It felt awful because I like break. I don't like breaking promises, uh, and I don't think anybody likes to have a promise to them broken. So, just be cautious when you're setting up your deliverable times. Just at least double it, please. Uh, start at a dollar and go up to much higher. Uh, the one dollar gives people the option to either give you exactly one dollar, or when they're making that pledge, they can change the number to anything they want. But that $1 pledge could just be like a zip file of images from your photography. And that's what I did. Mine was a zip file of images for uh, laptops and for phones. So it was like lock screens or backgrounds. <coughs> Excuse me. And then the smart people that make campaigns take a small amount of something that's super discounted and say there's only like 10 of these or 20 of these. And that's for the, the super early bird backers. Once those are gone, bump it up 20% and make another 20. And then once those are, you can always add more rewards as you go. But if you set those up ahead of time, so there's that, the really scarce cheap ones and the less scarce, more expensive ones and the even less scarce, more expensive ones, it creates a sense of urgency to your backers. And they might jump on the ones that cost less first. And you fill those up and that creates momentum. As people see those fill up, they're like, oh no, I better get the next tier. And then this top end reward that's luxurious but achievable. Something that you, you're not sure somebody would actually do, but if they do, it would make you really happy because it would put a lot of money in your pocket. So here's what I did. The one dollar reward was wallpaper sets, and I got to choose them. I, all I needed was an email address. And then the ten dollar reward was two random six by four by six archival pigment prints. Uh, and nobody got to choose. They were random. There's another, so I had two different projects. I had night paper, and I also have my night photography. So when it looks like things are doubled up, it's the choice between those two. And then we have the $25 reward, which is basically you get to choose what print you want for an eight and a half by 11. Now, this is way less than I would normally sell my art for, but I was very clear all I'm doing is trying to get back into having the right gear to continue my art. And there's a debate you could have endlessly about whether you should ever discount your art. Uh, a lot of people say you shouldn't. Other people say you got to make a living, right? In this case, I have a day job, but I wanted to get back into the project. So I made a choice to sell my art for less, and it worked out. Uh, 13 by 19, same thing. They get to choose one thing. And then the $100 reward is a cut paper mask, which you can see examples of my website. And then on the right, the $125 reward was something wonderful that happened when I launched. Uh, Eric Luden of Digital Silver Imaging reached out and said, hey, I don't see any silver prints on there. You've only got ink jet prints and carbon prints, which you'll see. He's like, I'd like to donate up to 10 uh, silver prints. <laughs> And I was like, that's fantastic. You really, I'll pay half. He's like, no, no, seriously, I want to donate. He's like, I like your art a lot. So he jumped in. You might have somebody reach out to you and say, I'd like to gain exposure through your, your Kickstarter campaign, or I believe in you by donating something. And then you can add that in as a reward. So this got added after I launched because of the generosity of another individual in the community. Uh, carbon transfer prints. These are the only thing that I really have left to do because uh, I haven't mastered carbon printing to my satisfaction yet. And I want the people who get the carbon prints to receive something that I think is of proper quality. So I'm still working on doing these. 
Uh, and some of these things didn't get backed at all. So this $408 rewards, apparently it wasn't attractive to anybody. And that's going to happen. But if you create a spread that's big enough, some cool things will happen. Like the $1,500 reward, three out of four got backed. And I was so excited when that happened. I was, I was floating. I was absolutely floating. So you never know. You got to make the spread. Put the big ones in there, too, even if you're not sure they're going to happen, because some very special people decided to invest at that level. So, and then this one, no takers. That's too bad, you know. But I definitely got nice surprises in the one below it. Here's, here's an important thing that might not be clear in the beginning. Uh, you must connect your bank account to Amazon Payments, and that clearing process takes time. Might be a couple days, might be a week or two. So do that well ahead of time, because if you want to choose your launch date, this has to be clear first. They won't launch without it without knowing that you can accept the money if you get it. Now you're ready to create your page. My god, we've done all this work. Have we even launched yet? No, we haven't. We have to create our page. This is, this is, not, this is not a small thing to do a Kickstarter project. Uh, so fortunately, they make it easy. The process of creating the page, if you put all the prep work in that I suggested, you'll be ready and you'll breeze right through this. You'll have everything ready. So once you've made your test page, they give you the option to send the test link out to friends, and they can leave feedback for you. But it's also a great way to plant the seeds with certain friends. I'm going to launch a Kickstarter. And they might tell their friends to get ready to back you, which is a great thing. And now I really, really suggest that you just stop looking at this stuff for at least three days, because you'll have driven yourself crazy, bonkers, thinking about all this. Leave it alone. Go on vacation. Turn off the internet for three days, something. Just don't touch it. Like a good story or good piece of copy, you just need to leave it alone before you can come back and see it fresh. Then you make your final adjustments and you launch. And it's only the second milestone of many. <laughs> so this is really a marathon. You're going to be working on this depending on how much time you chose, because you can choose, I forget, between 15 and 45 days for your Kickstarter. You're going to be working the whole time. This is just the beginning. You actually had time off during this preparation part, and now you're really starting the real work. If you're not selling a card game with Exploding Kittens, or the next best tech product with Bluetooth in it, or the next best camera product, and you're selling art, you realize that selling art is a very emotional exchange. Art is elective. It's not something you need to live. So your powers of persuasion must be good. You must help somebody imagine a space in their home that's missing something that requires your art. And that's a process that you learn over time. Or you're an artist, and somebody else does that job for you. But if you're running your Kickstarter, you have to understand that exchange. Because art is elective. So you have to make people believe. And then work every day on your campaign. It's, uh, and one thing I learned is if you do all of your updates before like, you have breakfast every morning, half of the people aren't going to see it. Or if you do it right before you go to bed, you have to schedule or find a way to schedule your social to happen while people are awake and using social. So there's, there's things like Buffer or Hootsuite that you can use to schedule your, your stuff ahead of time. You should work on using that if you're not comfortable doing side work at work. So at launch day one. Definitely start with your family and close friends. They love you. They'll back you. And they'll get that counter off of zero. That's the most important step. Get your first backers and start with the people who love you. It's not manipulative. They want to support you. So let them do that. They'll be happy to support you. And then you start sending personal messages, not broadcast emails, one at a time, one email at a time. It sounds like a lot of work, but it's very important. Make this personal. Send personal messages to your friends and some social contacts, and watch it grow. You might have like a 38% you know, success rate, sort of like Kickstarter had. You, not everybody's going to jump on this. Some people might not have money at the time. Some people might not even like what you're doing. It's just reality. But if you make it humble, you make it from the heart, then people will say yes, and some people will say no.
And please thank everyone. If they back you, send them a message. Like, that little boost of them feeling good is going to get bigger. And they might tell two or three more people because you said thank you. It's just, you get what you give, you know? It's, it's a cycle. And then make your own bit.ly to promote it. Uh, if you take any bit.ly URL and add the plus sign at the end, you can see the sharing stats for anybody's bit.ly, including your own. So there's a little social media hack for you. But if you make your own bit.ly account, which is free, then you can see all the statistics for the shares, where it got shared, by who, what days, how many clicks, all that good stuff. This is the message that I sent out. Uh, and I just changed the beginning part, you know. And this is where I just basically said, please help. You know, I've, I've got this big dream, and I want you to, to help me out. And here's something simple. If you don't know what to say, just use this last line. Send this last line out, and it will help me. So I tried to make it easy. I tried to spoon feed the people that, that I care about so that uh, they could also help me and not have to create anything, you know, because everybody's so busy. You know, having, giving somebody a problem means they're not going to do it. Giving them a prepackaged solution means they're more likely to help you. And this happened, too, where I already let the cat out of the bag, but Kickstarter chose my project as one of their staff picks. And I was just so happy. You know, like, they thought I was cool. Everybody likes to, you know, think that they, somebody thinks they're cool. So they sent me this, this email. Uh, and then after that, your launch day two, it could be three or four or whatever. Um, Find blogs that are within your category. Go find the email address of the editor. Send them emails about your project. Make sure you package it up, too. Make a little zip file with the image or images, some of your copy, you know, the links, some plain, unformatted text in there. Uh, and then please thank them for their time and consideration ahead of time. You know? And if they pick it up, go back on your social and say, guess what? We got featured by this blog. Go back to your Kickstarter page and put it on there as seen in and put a link to it. This all lends, lends credibility to what you're doing if it gets picked up. And then I'm just saying launch day three here. It happened for me on like day seven. Um, start using paid services to get your message at even wider distribution because by now you've exhausted your family and your friends and the people you know on social. So where, where do you go next? Why not buy some attention? And I'm really glad I did this. Part of me, the stubborn, proud part of me, didn't want to do this. Because I was like, you know what? I'm a professional marketer. I shouldn't have to do this. I've spent a lot of time trying to get people to understand who I am. Uh, and hopefully, the right people follow me, right? Well, I wasn't near my goal yet. So I said, let's, let's give this every chance of success. So I tried out. I got a lot of emails, by the way, as soon as you launch your Kickstarter. Through social, they're going to find your email. You're going to get a lot of solicitations from people saying, I can help your Kickstarter blow up if you give me money. <laughs> it happens all the time. And at first, I was like, ah, you guys stink. You know, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, wait a second. And I started looking into them. And I went onto their websites. And I looked at the real testimonials that they had. And I picked two of them. The first one, I'm not going to say what it was. It was just focused on saying, they made a promise to get wherever the categorical listing is from Kickstarter to get my project from wherever it was, like 47, up to the top 20. Ended up being number four when they were done. And when I was done, it was number one for at least five days. So that was cool to be, for people that browse Kickstarter in the app or on the website, to come in and go to the photo photography and see your project as the first one, it feels good. But I'm not sure it was. It helped my, my uh, backing at all. I didn't see a big boost in backing just by being number one. So I looked at it with a non-emotional stance and said, that wasn't worth the investment. I'm going to try a second thing. And that's when I found Green Inbox. Um, they actually did send me an email, too. They solicited my business, and they got it. And they offer a number of things. But what I did was I chose to send it's really a pain in the butt to send personal messages on Facebook. And Messenger was definitely out by then. So they help you craft individual messages to specifically the people you want to send to, and then help you send those out 
in a staggered manner. They also do this for lots of other services too. But for me, my strongest social was in Facebook. So this is literally what took my, my project from maybe 20% to over 100%. And it happened at a day and a half. It was extraordinary. The power of personal communication uh, is very, very important. And that's what this does. This just was a tool that helped me enable that personal communication. So you can see the stats right there. On 11.7, it started working. 11.8 and then 11.9 started petering down. Boom, funded. And it was extraordinary. It was, I was sending so many messages of, of gratitude and thank you to everyone who helped back it and share it during those days. Uh, and it was, uh, it was really worth it. So what did it cost me? The first thing I didn't like, 68 bucks. The second thing, 100 bucks. And I walked away with uh, close to $12,000, you know. There's also fees that they take out of that. We'll talk about that later. But it was worth the investment. I highly recommend it. And you must work hard at communicating well. Every time you touch an update or somebody, be enthusiastic, be clear, contact everyone. The stretch goals is really great. If you make 100%, how can you convince people to take it above 100%? Okay, at 120%, I'm going to send out, I don't know. I forget all of the small things I promised, but I did say if we make $8,000, no, $10,000, I'm going to include an original sketch from one of my sketchbooks with every single backer. And then they blew through that goal, too. So when I fulfilled, I took out all of my old sketchbooks and actually cut out a page for every single person so they, and signed it. So everybody has an original sketch as part of that. That's a big bonus. You know, that's original art. Not just the inkjet prints, very much reproducible. The, the original sketches, that's original art. So if you're thinking about stretch goals, think about things that are meaningful. For me to give away my sketches was very meaningful to me and the recipients. People got surprised by what they got because my sketches were all over the place. So. Uh, and then illustrate your updates with photos and videos, you know? It's, the level of production is irrelevant at that point. It's that you're communicating and that you're showing photos and videos. People love that stuff. They want to see it. They want to feel like they're part of the process, and they want to know what they invested in. So here's the first couple of updates that I did. My first one, right off the bat, staff pick. I'm blushing. It's great. Second one, Photo Plus. Um, I was letting people know that if they wanted to come see it, I was doing a talk at Photo Plus about night photography. And then, much to my surprise, one of my images was, was up in the rafters. You know, they, they chose one of my images really huge and printed it like 10 feet tall. Uh, so I think when people see things like that, they're also really, really excited to see that they're a part of something special, because one of those images was part of the project that I was talking about. So. That's validation. Anything you can provide that helps with validation, that the part of something special helps. This is about the gelatin silver print rewards that we already talked about. Again, gratitude. If somebody reaches out to help you, make sure you make it very public, your gratitude for them. And then the 100% backed by November 5th, just like that. So uh, then while this is happening or after it's all done, you want to create your backer surveys. Uh, each level of rewards gets a different survey, and you need to ask people for whatever it takes to send them their rewards, be it an email address if it's a digital reward, or a physical shipping address. While you're creating rewards, you also had to choose whether it's only for the USA or international. And then you have to also talk about you know, shipping costs and all that, too. So during the backer surveys, this is where if you missed something, during this whole process and you need to get more information from somebody, make sure you add it in, because you only get one chance to send the surveys out. That's it, <laughs> one chance. If you try to follow up by messaging, some people don't re reply to that. Uh, and then guess what, you win. Boom, you got fully funded. So you have until the end of the campaign to raise more money. This is where I ask myself how much is enough. 
and that's when I, I deliberately stopped marketing. I stopped promoting uh, because, frankly, I, I didn't want to take advantage of the emotional side of it, which was, it was almost, it was, my, my stuff got stolen, you know? And, and people did feel bad about that. And I was trying to make it very clear I'm selling art here, but I felt like the emphasis was about half and half. And I didn't want anybody to feel like I was doing anything but selling art. So I just stopped marketing it because I had met my goals. If I kept marketing it, I probably could have gotten around 30 grand. And that would have been really fun, but I'm not sure I could have slept well at night if I did that. So um, everybody else here, you probably won't have that opportunity. I hope that your stuff never gets stolen. I really do. That would be so wonderful. And you don't have to have the moral dilemma that I had, and that you can keep pushing until the end, and then you get 400% backed. That would be wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Uh, and then also, there's the little things that they don't tell you, like people are going to retract their pledges. If you make anybody unhappy, or they, their husband slash wife tells them, you don't have the money for that, they can go retract their pledge up until the moment that it ends. Once it ends, the money is yours. But during that time, you have to be on your best behavior. If you're not, then there's a problem anyway. So, Organize. How do you fulfill through organization? I created a Google Sheet. You can download all of the backer reports from your dashboard. And I just put each reward level in a separate tab. What, what I got the file name of every image that I was printing for them, whether I shipped it out, whether it was, being, it was packaged and all of that. And you can run it your own way. I was working with Mabel, uh, and she helped me do this. So like, I would print all this stuff and put it in the package, and she would take care of shipping it for me. Um, you, need to, you need to stay on top of this, because they're not going to help you with this part. It's your responsibility. And I definitely suggest visiting a financial advisor, because the laws are different in every state and country as to Kickstarter rewards. Uh, some see it as a capital payout. You know, so the taxation could be quite severe. You know, so uh, in my case, I spent it all before the end of the year uh, on materials and camera gear, so that it, I received the money and spent it in the same year, hoping that that was the right thing. And then I went to the financial advisor the next year, and he gave me. He said, "You should have come to see me first. So I'm passing that along to you guys. Go see a financial advisor, um, and then make art, ship art. You know." Um, if, if you're a 100% artist all the time, then this is going to be very easy for you. If you have a day job like me, and you have a life, then it's, this is your third job. And who wants to do their third job? It's very hard. It's very hard to do that and set aside the time and always be fulfilling, because you already got the money, man, right? <laughs> so you have to make good on all these promises, or else you're never going to have a successful customer ever again. So fulfill them as quickly as you can, as efficiently as you can. Um, and I like to go with the surprise and delight. Put something extra in every package. Make sure that you have like something cool that they did not expect that goes in that package. That way, when they get it, they're going to be like, well, wasn't well, that nice? That's cool. I like, you know, it, don't you love it when you get a little something extra? So, And then continue to communicate. Um, during this process of making and shipping, take pictures, make little videos, continue to post updates on your Kickstarter campaign page. Uh, it's all important. You can choose whether to send this update to everybody, public, to just the backers, or to just select reward tiers. So if you have something that's specific to, like me, the carbon transfer prints, I can send an update to just them saying, I haven't perfected the process yet. It's not that I don't love you. It's that it doesn't meet my standards yet. I'm sorry you had to wait so long. This is something I sent out last week. But my standards are high, and I want you to be happy. That's a legitimate update. And frankly, for better or worse, nobody expects Kickstarter rewards to deliver on time. So if you make it a promise and you deliver before that, you're way ahead of the curve. So when you choose your dates, like I told you before, just add some extra time. All right. You can sit back and bask in the glory now. You did it all. Your campaign's over. You got your money. And yeah, you shipped it all. You know, we can all pretend that we made it to this point, right? 
What would I do differently? This is a really important question. Man, I would have added lots of time to those deliverable dates. <laughs> I, I hate breaking promises. I really do. And perhaps I would have made a more professional video. I mean, I'm sort of torn about that. I, I like the sincerity of the iPhone video because it's very, it's very raw. You know, and the fact that it was like 4 in the morning and I'm looking haggard, you know, it's kind of good, maybe. But to have a little bit more polished video, it might have been better, you know, because it's forever. Your video is there forever. So, and I probably would have put more photos and videos in my updates. They're mostly text updates. And then again, I would ensure all my photo gear too. <laughs> uh, again, you can download this PDF on the next page. I'm going to give you the link. There's a link to Kickstarter's Creator Handbook. And I showed you a screenshot before from KickTrack. KickTrack basically says you can go look at anybody's Kickstarter campaign and see vital stats about it, like this. So you can see where it jumped over here, where I made my 100%. And then I just pretty much stopped. And then a couple of people waited until the end to really back in those, those big numbers at the end, uh, the $1,500 levels. They just wanted to wait until the very end. It surprised me. So uh, yeah. So here it is. If you want a PDF of this, it's just bit.ly slash kickstart art. That'll lead to a blog post on my website. And at the bottom of that blog post, you can download the PDF of this presentation. It's waiting for you now. So. And I have to say thank you. I really appreciated this. Thank you, everybody. Whether you're a hobbyist or a professional, B&H has the answers to your questions. Experience a world of technology at our New York City Superstore. Connect with us online or give us a call. Our staff of experts is happy to help.